Hello and welcome to another Franchise Hockey Manager stream. My name is Adam. I'm the Community Manager of Franchise Hockey. With me as always and digitally pictured on your screen is FHM producer Jeff. Say hi, Jeff. Hey, everybody. And we are back with Back to School Wisconsin Badgers 2028-2029 season. Does Disappointment Await? Part 23. Jeff, uh, I think that title pretty much sums up uh, how things are going in this stream, huh? Yep. I mean, we, well, we didn't go undefeated like we did last year at least uh i think we had one overtime loss we lost a couple of games this year but i yeah you know, well, theoretically we still should be the are we the number one team in the country wait i think we fell i think we fell no off we're back that. to no we're back to number one i think uh oh, okay. rpi i think it was rpi lost one defending national champion rpi and bentley's up there as well and then you see the, it's, that's a big Dan. That's the conference we've got to get out of. Uh, Michigan and Minnesota look decent. And I think we've got, we've lost to one of them this year, if I remember right. And Ohio State really not having a good year, three and 27. But, yeah, but like you see, we're, we've been pretty dominant. 30 game, or 29 games played and we're averaging over five goals a game and fewer than one against. So we better do it now because if we don't we don't do it this time, uh, well, I mean, we're probably going to run out of streams to do it in. Uh, I am just going to go ahead and I'm going to be careful down the stretch. I'm going to start rotating in some guys uh, just to I think, yeah, because I mean, yeah, the two star guys, I'm going to put him in for that uh, one star rookie Saint Marie and I won't do it this week but maybe next I might start uh, putting guys in a bit of a rotation to avoid injuring anybody late in the season so first game against Michigan State and easy a to uh, win I don't trust the guy we just put in uh, picks up three points and uh Mason Samuel Marty's uh, son is looking like he's going to win the scoring championship and he's, he's got the goal goalie pretty even further in hand seven goals up on goal seven goals up on the goal lead and six points on the point lead so he should be getting both of those things and you got to think he's a Hobie Baker favorite this year And let's put the back up in for game two, but other than that, it won't change. And it's nice, you can see we've got both goalies red hot at the moment. So rotating them has paid off. And San Luis, 13-0 uh, win. That's not very nice. So San Luis pads his point total, and he's got an 11-point lead now with that five-point game. And an 11-goal lead, too. He's way, way out in front of anybody else. And... There's got to be no way at all he's coming back uh, next year. He's, uh, do you remember who drafted him? It was the second rounder, I think. Was it Detroit? Uh, no, not Detroit. Click and look. If I can find him here. Uh, St. Louis. He was drafted by Arizona. Arizona. Which seems about right. Yeah, which I mean. 47th unless, overall. Unless they can't afford to sign him, uh, he should be there next year. So we got four games left in the regular season, and uh, we've, we've easily clinched the uh, conference top seed and for the uh, conference tournament. Uh, uh, not too much to worry about there. So we just try not to get anybody hurt in these last two weeks of the season. Uh, Oh, we'll probably have that little gap at the end, too, where the Alaska teams get caught up to everybody else. So there may be a bit of delay there, and we're still number one in the country. Uh, Bentley, it looks like Bentley lost the game there, but they're still number two, RPI three, and Bowling Green, Vermont. I'm just looking at the death chart of the Coyotes, and it lists Mason St. Louis as their number three left winger right now. Yeah. Who have they got... Uh, 
Oh yeah. Okay, they got Fisher now giving him a regular shift. And he's behind where San Luis from the Sally. Yeah, pretty good. Actually they got some decent depth ahead of him, Keller and the Sally. That's not too bad. Uh some other wound up with Connor Geeky, Logan Cooley, and that's actually a fairly good young team. They get him up there and how are they doing in the standings? Uh, about 500. So they look like they're about a year or two away. Anyhow, I got Minnesota up this week. Now let's uh, shuffle a couple of guys in just to avoid the potential injuries. Mm -hmm. Swap our second line left wing Flynn for Sheldrake. Yeah. Let's see, Strachan with Hobbs. Just going to swap, say, three guys to give a few guys garbage time at the end of the season. Might as well. Oh, okay. What? I'm just looking through the depth chart here. Chicago has 10 goalies on their depth chart. All signed, or is that just including draft? No, just. Yeah, five uh, to win over uh, Minnesota. Sam only gets another hat trick. Mixture of draft picks and mixture of guys that just never let rights go on. Uh, oh, yeah, drafted Europeans and they've still hanging on to the rights. And Nathan Cam are back up having a pretty good year. 0. 0.61 goals against average. Rob, as we started this, uh, if you haven't seen the stream before, we started this with a very early version of the database right after FHM 9's release and there were some issues with the uh, college talent pool and just the way it oh geez that's not good Braddy and Sam Michelle both managed to get suspended impressive Sam Michelle for three games okay so that's just the end of the regular season Raddy yeah both for three games okay so we go a little more intensive with the uh Replacements. And I'm just doing the AI lines on the pregame screen so it uh, doesn't affect anything permanently. P. Wog says, Go Blues, go Wings. Looking forward to Big Ten plus hockey package. And we almost lost that one. 5 4 overtime win over Minnesota. Shootout win, rather. How, many, how long did that go? Uh, okay, now I got it pretty quickly in the shootout. But Minnesota gets a point off of us. And it looks like they are going to finish second in the conference. Actually, no, they've got... Uh, Michigan's got three games in hand over them, so they may not. Jumped Cam schools against average up about 20 points. But the key thing here is just don't get anybody hurt in the last week of the regular season. Sorry, was that get everybody hurt? Is that what you said? Yeah, exactly. Uh, people were probably wondering about FHM 10. Now, I think we're going to have, we're pretty close to being able to announce some things. Uh, we're I think we've settled on a likely release date, uh, more or less at this point. Uh, I think it's probably going to be something fairly similar to last year. So 2024. Mm, right. So <laughs> probably not going to see it in October, but it won't be much longer than that, most likely. Just a couple of things we go again. We wanted to get in that uh, took a little longer than expected, and. Just want to make sure we got them thoroughly beat up and debugged because they're fairly uh, complicated things and you'll, and you'll see that when we do the uh, trailer and announcement. Uh, she'll be coming up well, probably later sometime this month. Uh, okay, last series of the, of the uh, year against Michigan. Not even going to dress Elias because he's going to be starting in goal in the playoffs. Put the third stringer, Sigran Lake Arbo in. And, yep, 
Okay, I'm just going to take all the decent guys out. So Michigan may steal a win off of us here. So I'm starting the third string goalie, playing a bunch of guys who didn't get much playing time this year. And we still win 7-4. to four. Connor Hobbs, the half-star defenseman who I just threw in, I wound up as a first star with a goal. Ah, see, this is why. We got an injury. No, it actually is a regular Tommy Duguay. Freshman uh, who's had a pretty good season on the third and fourth lines. But I think he'll be ready in time for the playoffs. And yet, yeah, Sanway doesn't need uh, to pad his points total any. Nobody's getting 11th points in the last couple of games of the season. Or last game of the season. Looks like Minnesota, Minnesota and Michigan are tied now for the uh, second place in the conference. And anybody else, sir? Oh, Mark, I'm, I didn't put him in. Why didn't I do that? Take Ross out, put Mark in. If he comes out, and that should be the end of those suspensions. All right. And we'll put the third stringer in again against Michigan, and he comes up with a 3 nothing shutout. And then Rollison, the third pair defenseman, is the first star. Oh, and see, there we go. Uh -huh. Another injury. Strained hamstring on uh, the, uh, probably our, he's number, what, our number seven defenseman? Number eight, maybe? So that might yeah, have been a starter. If I... Or maybe he got hurt because he hasn't played for so long. No, he was first star in the other game. Good enough then. <laughs> uh, do you see uh, the NHL in real life is talking about what the salary cap might be next year? Yeah, eighty. What was it, eighty-eight or eighty-nine million? Yes. See, uh, did you see that uh, goal Bedard had the other night? I did. Oh, that's. Uh, I'm not looking forward to playing in Chicago for the next few years. Okay, and this is probably going to be a couple of weeks to get that for the uh, late finishing teams to get done. So I will just set up my lines at that point. And we are still number one, Bentley number two. Yeah, that hasn't changed at all. Five six defenseman. That's right. Three wingers and eight four wingers. Uh, oh, that's yeah, because two guys hurt. I think he's gonna be back, so I'll just pencil him in for how oh, no, nice red. I can't. And centers, uh, no friends, it was sitting out. And we got our two suspended guys back. I'm missing somebody and that is presumably Duguay, so I'm just going to leave that until that uh, red goes away and I can put him back in the lineup. No big rush. It'll be a couple of weeks before we get to the tournament. How have the Jets been doing in the preseason? I haven't... Uh, so today they um, lost to Calgary the other night? Yeah, it's more how the guys are playing. And, and that's how more. they're playing. Honestly, Jeff, I don't watch a ton of it. I just kind of look at how what my reporter, report, local reporters are telling me. And I don't know. They said, you know, like uh, Hinola apparently has had a really good camp. That's good. And uh, Parker Ford has looked really, really good. Uh, he'll probably end up on the moose. But uh, they said yeah. he kind of looks like a new Tanev. 
Okay, and good development report. Uh, obviously, nobody going down. This is college. I think we got station a new three. I think it was two and a half before. But good improvement and a lot of good, a lot of improvement from the uh, guys we're going to have coming in uh, next year and the year after. And Jarrett Ross, our defenseman, top selling jersey in college hockey in San Luis, despite uh, sitting out a couple of games, uh, gets the offensive star of the month. I mean, he did have like 10 points in a couple of games there, so that sort of makes up for the missed games. And he does win the uh, scoring championship. And I think it's Alaska that's got the. Alaska Relax. Yeah, they got. Okay, two games this week, and then uh, I think we should be through to the conference tournament. And set our monthly budget. Scouting stays high. Uh, yeah, I can spend a little bit more on, on morale. Let's get all of that all the way up to the top and don't need to make any other changes. Yeah, 214 goals in 35 games. That's a pretty good season. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'd say it's pretty good. Uh, smelling Wrestling Geek says Harkins has been playing good for the Penguins since they claimed him from Winnipeg. Harkins? I liked Harkins. He just couldn't quite find a role in Winnipeg. I saw some... Who was it on? I don't know. I think it was some Pittsburgh writer said the stupidest thing I ever read. They said, well, you know, they brought him in, so he'll probably start the year in the AHL. And I'm like, that, do you have no concept of how waivers work? <laughs> That's all I thought when I saw that tweet. Okay, we should know Dugay still isn't ready. I have to wait a few more days for him. Because there's not a chance Winnipeg doesn't put a claim back in on him. Oh yeah. He had a good, he had a good clamp good camp in Winnipeg, but again, just numbers. Winnipeg's got like a pretty. Probably the best bottom six they've had in like five years right now. Oh, I wish I could say this so well. I mean, Canucks probably do too, but it's really not saying much considering what we've had at the bottom of the roster for the last few years. Well, half their third line is now on their fourth line in Winnipeg, so. Okay, Duguay is ready to. I don't know if he's still red. Almost ready to practice at least, but he should be back any day now. Still number one. Yep, still number one. Uh, looks like Bowling Green and Vermont flip places. Vermont's up to four now. Yeah, Winnipeg's biggest question mark is going to be their number two center. I'm trying to get Perfetti, but I don't know if that's going to work or not. What about Hellebuck? What's uh, Hellebuck's a goalie, Jeff? I he know probably that, wouldn't be a great with number two center. Kind of the... <laughs> I mean, if he doesn't, <laughs> aware of Hellebuck's position, thank you. Uh... Hellebuck, Hellebuck kind of came out and kind of crapped on everybody, <laughs> like all the media who said he wanted to leave. And I don't know if you've actually like listened to Elliot Friedman or not. Like he's been kind of backpedaling a lot of like trying to cover up some of the stuff yeah. that came out. Because he's like, well, well, we we never really we never really said he wanted out. And Hellebuck kind of at the beginning of camp, he's like, he goes, no, my goal is to win a Stanley Cup. And I think part of the thing is, yes, he wants to win a Stanley Cup, but he also wants to get paid. I think he also found out very quickly that the only place that's going to pay him the amount of money he thinks he's worth is Winnipeg. And so if, if Winnipeg can show that they're still going to be competitive i think he ends up staying i don't want again i don't want to see hellebuck on a seven-year deal i think that would be awful but hellebuck on a you know on a five-year deal i'd be okay with are you gonna get him for anything other than long term though that's depends on how much money he wants yeah and keep in mind we were just saying the cap is going up next season so some of those yeah so he, he might sign a two or three year deal or and kind of weigh his options. I keep... <sighs> but that's a dangerous game to play, too, when the Jets have some pretty good prospects. I keep going that. to look for the uh, for a new button we've got on the uh, 
FHM 10 roster screen to score, show the stats that it's not here. But uh, I'm just going to do a quick look at, look through our uh, team stats before we go into the playoffs. Uh, San Luis obviously way out in front. Uh, Ascot was a nice surprise. Second line center, but he played like the first liner. Uh, Flynn also sophomore continuing to develop. San Michelle actually went back a little. That's his worst scoring total in, since he joined us. A little surprising. Uh, and Akerson, the guy who was really slow to develop. Uh, you can see that first season where he only had seven points and one goal. He was stuck on, I think, one star for quite a while, and he finally took off. He is uh, somebody, he's a first runner. He got Flyers, ninth overall. So that looked like a question, a question we'll pick when the Flyers did it, but it, that maybe had to pay off for them. Uh, D scoring isn't quite as high this year. Ross and coin Adrian Coin's son who had wow that uh, basically half of what he did last year didn't notice he had fallen off so badly although part of that may be just a little better depth than this team yeah uh, it, spelling wrestling geek says about time Anaheim signed Zegris as well so who's left on free agents uh you mean restricted free agents? Anything. Well, there's lots of free agents left, but well, I mean, restricted free agents is Pinto. Days. Yeah. Um, there's one other one, too. Pinto and somebody else. And Pinto just seems kind of they're trying to figure out where he's going to, how much money everything's worth. And then the other one is... And Dugate is fully healthy, so we're all ready to go for the playoffs now. Are the Alaska teams done yet? Oh, there was one more week with uh, Alaska playing Lindenwood, that's why. Okay, so it's this week we should get the conference tournament. That's why that took so long. Okay, I'm trying to find UFAs. Um, Are you looking cap friendly? Let's see. Okay, hold on. Shane Pinto, I said. Kale Addison signed already, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Jamie Drysdale, find. Okay, we got the award nominations here, and yeah, not surprisingly, San Luis is nominated for Obi Baker, and he's the first guy I mentioned. Uh, Ryder McLeod on Denver. Oh, pretty good season for a defenseman, 52 points. <coughs> and Excuse Steve me. Grumley of North Dakota, also defend, also defenseman, 52 points. Are these guys NHL? Uh, Prospects, yeah, McLeod is a Leaf third rounder. Sorry, Stevie oh, Grumley, not Steve Grumley. And Grumley is a fourth sorry, rounder of the Rangers. RFAs include Jamie Drysdale, so I was right there. Uh, Shane Pinto, uh, Martin Kraut, or Kraut. Yeah. Didn't get a goalie know. nominee uh, for the Richter Award. I think we split time between them. If I had gone with one guy, he'd probably be on the list because the goals against average are so low. Not nominated for top athletic director or coach. So, uh, Philip Hallander is an RFA. Vitelli Kras Krasnov yeah, is an sorry, RFA, but we got, we're getting down. Isn't he gone? Isn't he in Russia now? Um, that's why I don't think he signed yet. Did he? Can't remember. Okay, uh, LSK Heppel Tommy is also an RFA and Henrik Borkstrom. Yeah, so we're down to the, the, like third, fourth liners, fifth, sixth defensemen. All right, UFAs though. Let's see. Well, that'll be all the guys who are getting cut this week too. 
Yeah. Brandon Sutter didn't work out, uh, apparently, in Edmonton. Well, they said he's not healthy. It's not that he didn't work out. It's, he said, he as soon as he started skating, he's just like, no. Yeah, okay, well, I guess I'm going to set him back to retired in the database, so I guess, I guess that isn't going to happen. Actually, I could put him on the, uh, make him permanently injured. Okay, Hobbs is healthy, even though he's not going to be playing. And there we go, finally, the uh, conference tournament. Atlantic first round, we want the Big Ten. Um, yeah, okay. that was the other idea. Okay, we yeah, we've already played the first round. Uh, Ohio State uh, almost upset Michigan. That's a big surprise. Uh, Michigan was only went beat them two to one, so we get them in the uh, second round of the tournament. Uh, Minnesota cruising past Penn State and Michigan State, who I think we beat up on pretty good this season, over Notre Dame. So Michigan State and Minnesota in one semi, and us in Michigan in the other one. So this is the conference tournament. Uh, this carries a guaranteed. Uh, spot in the national tournament but i mean we're obviously going to get a spot in the national tournament even if we choke down somehow lost a game here as we're the number one team in the country about probably a pretty good margin but uh conference tournament semi-final dun, dun, dun. against michigan and five nothing win Brandon Flynn with the first star goal and assist, and Delius gets the shutout. And we're looking for the Michigan State Minnesota game, and Minnesota wins for that four to three. Just went up past out briefly, uh, and so we'll get them in the final in two days. And do we have any injuries, suspensions, anything else? Nope, everybody's 100% perfect. Let's take a quick look at what uh, we got playing against us. Yeah, I mean, you can see how the lack of depth there. They've got a decent goalie, god awful defense, and a couple of good players at four. Uh, Forward, but uh, there's no way we should lose this. And we don't. Eight nothing win. So running away with the uh, Big Ten Conference Tournament. And now we just got to see how the National Tournament shapes up. I think I just saw their RPI won their conference as well. So they're going to be back to defend their title. As you kind of expect. Yep. So from what I remember, they had uh, they didn't lose many guys to graduation, so that's going to be a tough team again this year. get around into that Should probably take a look at the NHL tunes they're going to be heading into the playoffs shortly and it looks like we got Dartmouth in the first round so national tournament uh, first round Dartmouth it'll be in the ECAC and they were 19, 14, and 1, so not awful. No, that's actually not a bad team. Probably as good a goalie as we've seen in the conference this year. Although he didn't put up great numbers. Defense isn't fantastic. There's a lot of forward depth there, so we shouldn't sleep on these guys. Swedish guy Johannes Frisk is their best player. Uh, Belarus and centering him and the Canadian. Charles Juno. I don't know if that's any relation to Joe Juno. 
but looks like their scoring drops off pretty quickly after that. Although, did they have... Looks like they might add injuries because you can see there's a lot of guys here with only half a season. So that may they may be better than they look, or at least than their stats were. And as far as other Big Ten teams making it in, uh, did any? <laughs> oh yeah, Jeff. How do you feel about the Canucks losing Spencer Martin? What, somebody claim him? Yeah, he's in Columbus now. Good Lord, why? Because I mean, they claimed him. New backup. Well, good luck to no, him. No, I, I, I'm just kind of skimming here through. Uh, Elliot Freeman just posted his 32 thoughts, and he made an error here that just makes me chuckle. And what was that? It says, well, it said, this just came out. It says, that said, when it comes to waivers, everybody's waiting on the goalies. Teams to watch. Buffalo with Mike Comrie and Uko Pekka Lukonen. Mike Comrie, huh? <laughs> Apparently, he's making if you, a, if you got Mike Comrie comeback. playing in goal, you're <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. I just looked at the NHL stats. Uh, let's see. Uh, well, Wings are actually doing not too bad. Canucks are are doing surprisingly well. I think they got. Yeah, this is a game where they got Connor Bedard. So that's actually just kind of depressing to look at. And your Jets are at about 500 and probably going to miss the playoffs. But anyhow, we got Dartmouth in the first round. Anything we have to change here? I don't think so. Everybody's 100%. Quick last minute scan through the lines. Happy with the power plays, I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's all right, guys. Okay. Ah, please, I mean, this is probably going to be the last conference tournament, the last national tournament we play in this game. Uh, now it probably is, so please don't lose in the first round. Yeah, actually, you talked about uh, Spencer Martin. I'm surprised if he didn't go. And we didn't lose in the first round. 11-0 uh, went over what I thought I was a good that. Dartmouth team. Now, we only outshot them 34-15, so they just had... Wow, look at the first period. That a few was, goals. That was over in the first eight minutes. 4 nothing after, as of 7-15, then 6 nothing uh, at the end of the period. 8 nothing at the end of the second. We, even taking a gas off at the end. Uh, wow, it's d 21 defensive game rating on one of the Dartmouth guys. Oh, 20 there, too. I don't know about, oh, 19, even worse. A bunch of guys were minus five. And I'm guessing the beginning 90. Now we got a oh, now we got a couple of hundred offensive game ratings from Flynn and uh, Andrew Lawrence, our third line center. Six, wow, six assists plus seven. What did he do during the regular season? He wasn't really putting up a ton of points then. Well, he's saving everything for this. Yeah. Uh, he's a freshman, too. 19-year-old freshman. Six assists in his first uh, national tournament game. So I'll take that. Definitely. And let's see who we get in the second round. I saw Bowling Green, or Green got through. Okay, Bowling Green will be, will be playing Bowling Green in the second round. They beat, oh, it's Brown. Beat Brown 6-2. Uh, Vermont uh, crushing North Dakota 7-0. They'll play Western Michigan, who beat Clark, who upset Clarkson, actually. Uh, Harvard getting beat by RPI, who's the higher seed there. And RPI will be playing... Colorado College in the second round to upset Ferris State. I think, did, I think Colorado College won a national championship earlier in this, didn't they? Got a look. Nope, I'm wrong. They didn't. It's been Arizona State, Clarkson, Michigan Tech, Nebraska, Miami of Ohio, and RPI. 
And in the last one, uh, oh, Long Island University, one of the fairly new teams in Division One, knocks off Bentley. Uh, and Bentley had had a pretty good season. They were uh, close. I think they were actually number one at one point. So I believe they were, there, yes. Yeah. And uh, Yale over Princeton, all Ivy League there. So Yale and Long Island in the one RPI. I think RPI has got a fairly easy route to the final again. And theoretically, so well, no, we got Bowling Green here. And they were, if I remember correctly, uh, yeah, 35 and 2 in the CCHA. Bad goaltending, that's a good sign. The D is a little bit better than we've run into lately, so we may not be able to run the score as much, but not quite as much. Sorry, I saw B. Cosby there, and it's Bruce Cosby. Bruce <laughs> Cosby. Interesting. And, okay, so it's uh, Bob Murray, presumably, not the GM. Uh, their leading score, it looks like they're, well, no, their scoring depth isn't bad. It's reasonably balanced. We're going to have to shut down more than one line here, but I think we've got these guys. So hopefully we didn't uh, waste all our efforts on crushing Dartmouth in the first round. Need to have a lot in the tank. Just as you lose one game here and the season's done. Not that that's ever happened to us. Never. Or possibly repeatedly. All right, uh, development report, quick look through there. And it looks good. Some of the guys were in the tournament, still putting up points. It's Connor Hobbs, uh, only one star, but he may actually wind up playing regularly for us next year if we actually made it that far. And I don't think anybody else got any. Moved up in the star ratings, but there we go. Okay, Bowling Green. Oh, we got to do the monthly budget too. Don't change that and go straight into the game with Bowling Green. Everybody's at 100% health. Special team's fine. They got a couple of guys who are a little bit tired. But I think we should be able to get this. 5 1 win. Ascot, second line center is the first star, so another fairly easy win. So we're going to get either Western Michigan or Vermont, it's going to be Vermont. RPI beats Colorado College, and it looked like I think Yale was beating Long Island there. So RPI will be playing Yale, and we will get, uh, I just looked at it. Uh... Is it Vermont? Don't ask me questions, Jeff. I can't remember things that. My brain's going at like 90 miles an hour in 17 different directions at the best of times. Okay. It's Vermont. I was right. Okay. Okay. So Vermont, who's had a pretty good season... Top team in Hockey East, 27-4-3. and three. Pretty impressive goal numbers. Uh, hmm. Bad goaltending. That's a good sign. A really good defenseman. But then mostly mediocre after that. Uh, fairly young group of forwards. Doesn't look like there's anybody really dominant there. So another team that can't really touch us for scoring. Uh, who's the one who says Gauthier? Gauthier? Uh, 53 points, 34 games, all these only three stars. Hmm. Yeah, there's only about one line of scoring there. I don't think this is the best team we've played. These guys don't look as good as Bowling Green was. And then Yale and RPI in the other game. 
So two games away from the national championship. Fingers crossed. Oh, that's the worst that could happen. Oh, Importantly, we haven't had any injuries at all in this tournament. Okay, everybody's 100% healthy. Everything's going just fine. Nothing's going to go wrong here. Emilia starting in goal again. It's a team you should be able to beat. They've got, they don't have good goaltending. Just get shots on this guy and we'll get it. And we do. 5-0 win. Aiden the coin with a couple of assists. And then Charest, so we, I uh, think, oh, that was the other guy. Uh, yeah, Charest was a regular. 43-11 on shots, so we pretty much dominated them. And we will be playing against defending national champion RPI. So, I mean, if you're going to, there's a time to win our first championship. It's by knocking off the defending champions. And let's take a look at what RPI's got. Or what's, well, how have they made it here so far? They, uh, Harvard 4-2. 2-1 two over Colorado College, who played surprisingly well in the playoffs. And then 4-2 over Yale. And in their conference tournament... And, well, yeah, yeah, they cruised through the uh, ECAC uh, tournament pretty easily. 3-1 over Cornell, and then 6-1 over Clarkson, and 6 nothing over Princeton. So this must be a decent team. And you should be able to see uh, the guys who were there last year still. Oh, wow, look at that. Really questionable goaltending, although the guys... He's half a star, but he's putting up uh, 1.69 goals against average, and he hasn't lost a game this year. Huh. So he's on fire. Yep. Uh, and definitely the deepest defense we've seen this year, although it doesn't look like any of them are... Okay, Tron by 31 points, 13 goals, and 26 games. He's probably the best offensive defenseman, and... Yeah, okay, there's the problem. Look at those forwards. Good. We haven't seen Very this good. many for three, three and a half, four in the big problem, Foglia. We actually only had 30 points in 25 games this year. He's wasn't even their leading scorer, I don't think. No, that is Manisto, the Finnish guy. Finnish 25-year-old. What's he still doing in college? Uh, Pae behind him. Yeah, they, I mean, the, the structure of the scoring is pretty similar to us. Not, nobody, or at least once you get past San Luis, nobody won, no one guy running away with it. But just not quite as good, I don't think. So, uh, what do you think, Adam? What do I think how we'll do? I don't know, tough, tough, tough question. I want to believe, Jeff. All comes down to this. Do I want to make any line changes? Put the backup goalie in. <laughs> Would make a huge difference. Pumping up the... And lean on the top lines for this game. Okay, Sam, I mean, if you got one, this is your last college game. If you're going to Arizona next year, let's make it count. RPI versus Wisconsin for the national championship. Yes, there we go. 4-1 win. And we are national champions, finally. So I do get a win this year, Adam. Hooray! So, it only took you 18 years into the future. Uh, I think it was like six, but yeah. So, 4 1 win. What happened here? 1 0 after the first period. Okay, San Luis showed up, scored in the first, rest uh, in the second, gets the insurance goal. Okay, and Foglio gets next to 2 1, so it was close for a little while, and Akison finally scored, and 
Ratty off the first low with the goalie out uh, and killing a penalty. So that was a little scary at the end there, I guess, what happened. Oh, Duchenne took a couple of penalties in the third. But Ratty puts one into the empty net while killing a penalty. Uh, what are the shots? No, 29-29. That was closer than it looked. Flynn had a good game. Uh, San Luis taking, yeah, San Luis showed up. 86 game rating, six shots, a goal. Actually blocked three shots. Kind of surprising. And won a couple of faces. Yeah, did a little bit of everything. Okay. So he made the most of his, what's probably his last college game. And Elias and goal, uh, definitely his last college game because he's a graduating senior. Gets the win, and let's get the pop-up. Should be right after this. Come on, there we if go. The, if the game just ends, we'll, we'll know why. And I got the uh, college achievement, too. N -n -n National champion. You ever got that one, Adam? <laughs> no, I haven't. That's mostly because I've been playing historical, Jeff. Ah. So there we go. Championship number seven for Wisconsin. First one with me running the team, though. And the 11th, yeah, pretty one-sided. Uh, national tournament, we have scored 25 goals and gave up two against the best team in the country. So, so now it's time to resign from your job? Yeah, and, and look uh, for a new one. Start at the bottom. Or go look for a job in the pros. SPHL? Uh, I'd be shooting a little higher than that. So game, who's graduating? To go uh, back. Was it the FPHL we did a long time ago? Rollison, our spare defenseman, uh, well, he gets a national championship, even if he wasn't playing much. He played a few games this year. Seneschal, uh, Second or, second or third pair defenseman, Ironside, who I think was a walk-on goalie who's never actually played a game for us since four years here. What Preston. a sweet name, though, for a goalie, right? Carson Ironside. Ironside. Practice goalie, basically. And Elias, the guy who, uh, this first year, uh, didn't qualify academically, so he redshirted him. And he got his act together in the second season, managed to make it, managed to keep his grades up. So came back and had a pretty solid college career with us. Uh, see the whole thing there. See that missing 24-25 season is when he was academically ineligible. But uh, so yeah, goals career goals against average for NCAA is 1.4. And as far as I know, he is, yeah, totally undrafted, free agent. And he did play a little bit uh, for the Slovak national team. Or actually, no, he's, okay, no, they, that's the uh, World Juniors a couple of years ago, or near the start of the game. Well, he went and played in the, something in November. Yeah, he was, I'm surprised that's not showing, I'm surprised that's not showing up his international stats. Unless he just sat on the bench the whole time and didn't actually get into a game. Also possible. But yeah, he played in the, for the Czech, the uh, Slovak national team, and yeah, the Deutschland Cup. Unless we're not counting stats for that internationally, I'm not sure why we wouldn't, though. Something to double check, I guess. And oh, we should get around to the award ceremony. Somebody named Red Culberson. You don't see that many kids named Red nowadays. I don't remember the last time I heard of it. Also, don't see many with sideburns like that. Well, sometimes you want to have some awesome sideburns. Those no, are some are... good mutton chops. But they're not red, though. Or maybe well, he's a communist. Doesn't necessarily have to be about the hair. 
And we're just going to let this uh, roll around to the uh, award ceremony. It should be coming up shortly. And we probably may see a few of our guys being signed. There we go. Badger's triumphant. And development report. And probably get a bunch of guys graduating when we're taking off. Yeah. Hobbs went up again. Or is that? No, that's the old one I'm looking at. That's not from this week. And here's the award ceremony. So, big question. Does Mason St. Louis get the uh, Hobie Baker? No. Ryder McLeod. He got robbed. Unbelievable. Does St. Louis at least get the playoff MVP? No, Brendan Flynn, the other left wing on our team. That's fair. Richter goes to Jerry Farmer. Mercyhurst. Top athletic director, Colorado College, Ryan DeRoche, and top coach science, Ryan Klo at RPI. Hmm. And the humanitarian award is Ty Henry, who just graduated from Quinnipiac. Look at McLeod. What exactly did he do? Um, yeah, Denver's captain, 52 points, 35 games. That's plus 31, 84 average game rating. Okay, he was a pretty good player. We'll give him that. Even if uh, San Luis is a better prospect. And where San Luis got beat by a Leaf. That's just terrible. Oh, that's actually, he would have been a Jet, but the, because uh, the Leafs got that pick, pick they used on him f from the Jets for Alexander Romanov who appears to have played all of one game for Winnipeg. And I went to, to wait, did Winnipeg get anything from him? Right, where did, oh, I got, okay, they got, no, they got, then they, they got a third rounder back. Someone named Victor Yernaheim. So the pig's done pretty good with its third rounder, so I'm not complaining. But, uh, so let's see how the NHL is doing in the, the playoffs. They are. Well, they aren't the playoffs. We'll just play this out to see who wins the Stanley Cup. Because the Canucks aren't out yet. Oh, man. Although the uh, Ducks are up 2 to 1 on them now. Looks like the Jets didn't make it at all. Colorado, the defending champion. And I'm 3-1 uh, on the Canucks, so that season's about to be over. And I don't know, they come back 3-2 uh, Anaheim now. Canucks take one back. But Anaheim wins in six. That looked like there were a few games going into game seven there. Oh, okay. Have to pay attention here. Mathis Dufour, our seldom used uh, was he a junior, no, sophomore, involved in an off ice incident. But the teammates don't really care, so that may not be a problem. Yep, no, no changes to the harmony, so whatever it was wasn't too bad. Or at least we successfully swept it under the rug. That'll be Buffalo, Vegas, and Dallas winning their game sevens. Oh, there we go. What's that? Oh, I was just looking at uh, the 2011 NHL draft because this is how my mind randomly comes upon things. Yeah. And I was looking for answers. Cutting back the uh, scouting. I'm not going to remember if I mentioned this before. We changed a couple, just changed a couple of things in the scouting mechanics for college and junior teams in 10, so you won't get as many uh, 
when you're playing at those levels, you won't get a, when you get to the uh, drafts, you won't get as many totally uh, totally unscouted players. It should be a little easier to get a get the players you need to have scouted scouted. And Hall of Fame nominees, got to go with Dave Babich, both a Jet and a Canuck. And it looks like the Wings are still alive in the playoffs here. And up 2-0 on the Rangers. Wow, 9-6. Bowling out the Rangers there, up 3-0. About to sweep the Rangers. And that would be into the uh, Eastern Final. Maybe, yeah, they sweep the Rangers. And it looks like they're playing Buffalo. I'm not sure who's up there. Buffalo, or no, Carolina's up. And Anaheim and St. Louis in the other one, so it looks like Colorado uh, isn't going to repeat. Buffalo and Carolina, they're all tied. All going to Game 7. And Buffalo, Anaheim, and Dallas. And the Wings beat Buffalo in Game 1, so the Wings are on a roll here. I hope Pewog's watching this. I don't know. Oh, well, I'm sure Buffalo he is. If not, he'll catch, catch it after. Yeah. Yeah, Buffalo up 2-1 to one now, and Anaheim leading the other series. Although it looks like uh, Dallas just got a win. And Detroit evens it up, and Anaheim's up 3-1. to one. Detroit in the lead now. Anaheim, uh, both series are 3-2, so... Anaheim and Detroit trying to finish off the series in Game 6. Neither can, so we're going to Game 7, both uh, semifinal games. And Detroit-Anaheim in the final. Now we got another guy in off five. We got, like, our, was that the red-shirted goalie? Oh, and, uh... So what you're saying is that it is time to leave. I don't know, it's just a minor uh, off-ice incident with extra, but the, uh, captain can't resolve it this month. And, well, we got somebody playing in the World Championship. Oh, San Luis playing for the U.S. in the World Championship. And had two goals and went over Germany. And a hat nice. trick and went over Norway. So, yeah, you think he's not going to the NHL next year? I don't know. Depends if they sign him or not. Wings up uh, one nothing in their series with Anaheim. Now, Kendo wins the World Championship. Although, uh, San Luis was played again and had a goal. How many is the stat line for that tournament? Wow. 18 points in 10 games. Did he leave the tournament in scoring? Oh, no. Villeneuve uh, running away with the scoring lead there. But, yeah, third in the tournament scoring. Oh, but not then one of our... Uh, Wait, is Chaz Lucius? No, he's Minnesota alum. We had his brother, that's right. So, brother of one of our former players. In second, and... I mean, San Luis wins a national championship, then immediately goes to the world championship, and nearly leads that in scoring. So, if Arizona uh, doesn't sign him in the offseason, it's... Well, it's Arizona being Arizona, but... Okay, here we are, just seeing how the stuff... I mean, to be on. fair, Arizona convinced... Uh, what's his name? This year aside... Uh, Cooley, right? Yeah, true. Got him out of college early. And I tied that series up with the wings. And we should see uh, this. Finishing shortly... 
Hall of Fame vote again. Now Detroit up two to one. Looks like they won that in overtime. Up three to one, so the Wings about to win the championship here. Nope, Banheim makes it uh, three two. Tied three three, so game seven. He wug, look away. Nope, oh, got cut off. <laughs> oh, run off election. We should just hang hang right here and not, don't advance anymore. <laughs> staff I've got to quickly uh, renew. Scouts and assistant coaches that I don't want to lose. Okay, and this should be okay. Seven four Anaheim wins down at game seven of the finals in Anaheim. And speaking of Terry for Zgrass, five points and first star. Just had to crush his dreams uh, like that. Huh? Kind of heartbreaking for the Wings fans out there. Sorry, Paywalk. Yeah, five point nine for Zgrass. Uh, I mean, where is he? Oh, yeah, and I'm at a pretty good year overall too. What happened? Oh, Colorado, defending Stanley Cup champion, missed the playoffs. Actually, finished behind Winnipeg. Woo! Just like this year. Okay, so I guess we're gonna, yeah, we're a little over and wind up there now that we've actually won a national championship, and you can't hold that over me anymore. I never hold anything over you, oh, Jeff. No, no, not at all. All right, with that, thank you very much for tuning into another Franchise Hockey Manager stream. We typically stream every Wednesday night at 10 p.m. Eastern on Twitch.tv slash Franchise Hockey Manager, as well as Twitch.tv slash OOTP Developments. All of our streams are archived on our YouTube channel, which is YouTube.com slash OOTP Developments as well, with archives going live Sundays at about 3 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can also reach out to us on our Facebook page, which is Facebook.com slash Franchise Hockey Manager on Twitter, we're at Franchise Hockey. We can also find a link to our official Discord channel and our Twitter bio. And of course, you can come on down to the official website, which is ootpdevelopments.com. Click on the community button in the top right-hand corner, which will bring you to the official forums, where you can come talk about Franchise Hockey Manager, Idle Park Baseball, Perfect Team Go, or anything else you wish to discuss. And hey, while you're on the website, maybe you want to sign up for a newsletter. Maybe you want to make sure you're following us. You never know when things might get announced. Might be sooner rather than later. So, yeah, you should do that. Jeff, did I miss anything? No, I don't think so. That about sums it up. Uh, we can get some news on FHM to you as soon as we can. Uh, but right now, realistically, looking like it'll probably be very similar launch time to what it was last year. But everything is moving along. Uh, we've got, I think, pretty much all the major features we want to get in are in now. So just a matter of getting that thoroughly play tested and then all the other last minute stuff uh, that needs to get done to release the game uh, done. Oh, and we're at uh, June 30th. Uh, my season score is 52. Check marks and everything except manager of the year. So I will take that. And there we go. We probably had some guys left, but if we, if I think we may wind up having one more stream of this, if we do, I'll cycle it around to the start of the next season. You can see that, although I may wind up doing something different. I haven't really decided yet. But thanks for coming out, and uh, we will be back next week with Adam's uh, Columbus game. <laughs>